Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Carl, one of the electrical tutors here at Universal Skills. And as you can see, we're not in the workshop this time. We've been put in pretty much Harry Potter's cupboard. And that's due to the fact that we are uh, inundated with um, courses running at the moment and Learners in Centre, which is great. Um, so what we thought we'd do is bring to a, a short video on just how to make off an MC4 connection uh, in relation to solar PV string cabling. And just a, a bit of a general chat as well, um, just about the importance of these connections and what impact they may have on your job and other jobs that you may come across. Roller credits. Okay, so obviously with the um, push for renewables um, at the moment, and obviously that's going to increase as time goes on, there's a major part to play for us as installers, uh, whether that be for solar PV installations or also intertwining um, energy storage into there as well. Um, we've got to be making sure all our installs are compliant. And unfortunately, like many other situations, some installations that we do come across existing ones um, may not be fully compliant and may be down to poor practices um, in terms of installation, that kind of stuff. So it's important that we check these things and we are aware if anything, of how to do a job correctly. I don't think anybody undertaking this work is competent and, and qualified to do so, um, and will have been given the relevant training, etc. But it's good for us just to refresh that as well, um, and hopefully maybe give you some hints and tips on how to make off uh, connections and what connections you would be dealing with on a daily to day, uh, on a day to day basis. Sorry. So, um, first off, um, MC4 connections. You're probably thinking, what are these? Um, these are generally the most common connection used for solar PV. Um, installations in terms of connecting your string cables and, and making these connections off. So an MC4 connector would be one of these. And this connection here gives a nice suitable um, sound solid connection as well, um, ensuring that your connections between your positive and negative uh, sides of your string cabling are connected correctly and there's not going to be any risk of um, poor connections. So some of the problems that you may come across uh, with poor connections um, could be um, damage to the actual uh, connection itself, so you could get melting and such. Because this is DC that you're going to be dealing with, um, we've got to be very, very careful, like any wiring, but um, it, it is, it's going to offer some, some form of problem, so it's making sure connections are always uh, suitable and, and correctly made off. But with being DC, um, the problem is that obviously you're going to get that DC arcing. So you've got to be making sure that all these connections are sound. And with this type of connection, um, if we just pull this connector apart, you'll see it's in two parts there. Um, you've got a positive side and you've got a negative side, um, both of which will have to have a crimped uh, connection inside. Um, which feeds in, which we'll get into um, as the video goes on. But ultimately, you're making sure that these connections are made off correctly. Because if not, you could um, you could experience, like I say, problems with it actually um, burning out connections. You could have problems with water ingress because a lot of these fittings themselves um, will have a bit like a stuffing gland on the end. And this is keeping um, water ingress um, and, and basically water getting into the fitting itself um, out so you need to make sure these are soundly um, connected and usually these are I think off the top of my head they're about IP67 rating so they're suitable for all weathers um, but ultimately when they're made off outside and they're behind the panels the water's not going to get in there um, you've got to be making sure that's not going to be a problem because obviously water and electricity don't mix um, and especially as water would get into there if it wasn't correctly made off you could get problems with corrosion and that kind of stuff um, as well, when you're making these connections, once they've been made off, you've got to think about uh, a, a little bit of, of where those connections are going to be lying. Um, you're not going to be putting this type of connection or any cabling associated with this equipment anywhere near where rodents may be and such, because uh, again, if the cables were to get chewed or the connections, um, that could also contribute to some form of um, loose connection or potentially um, damage that connection that could lead to a fire. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll work our way through this type of connection. I'll show you some of the tools that we're going to use um, and just give you a brief overview of how you will make off one of these connections safely and ensure that it's fully compliant and it's um, doing the job that it's meant to serve. Okay, so with this MC4 connection, um, you can see, like I say, it's, it's going to be split over two parts. So you can either manually uh, disconnect those or you can use the MC4 connection spanner, which I'll show you shortly. Um, 
but as well these mc4 connections also come bridged across so you would need a tool to be able to access these joints and take them apart um, so this is very useful especially on connections where um, it's going to be around anybody that could be in that area um, so what you don't want to have is somebody able to come over to a connection and just break it away like so so be aware of the type of connections that you're getting but ultimately they just click together like so and you will have both a positive and a negative side and generally they come as a full kit so you can get obviously multiples of these but for an example we have um, a new kit there so we've got the mc4 connection and then we've got the ferrule ends inside there um, so you can sort of see there on those parts that's a the part there that you will be using and generally speaking um, you will have um, the, the full pair okay so as I'll show you with this, so you've got the MC4 connections there. Um, you can get the MC4 connection spanner, which is like so. Um, but these are, they're, they're okay actually, the plastic ones. But if you can, try and get a metal version um, just for uh, longevity of it really. Um, just because the plastic ones are okay, but um, they could potentially break depending on where you're storing them, that kind of stuff. But for example, if you were to have it there and you wanted to remove these, all you'd need to do is line them up. I need to do is line them up on the side of the fitting and pull it away but again like i've mentioned to you even if you did have them together like so as long as they're secure they're perfectly fine and you can get your fingers just inside there in the pop apart so when you have got the fittings apart like i've mentioned before you'll have um, a positive and a negative side these are also referred to as the male side which is that one and then the female side there and as you can see inside they've got two uh, slight differences which will come into um, what those are when we put the, the ferrule lens in as well. So generally what you want to do is get both of your ferrule parts here and as you can see you've got a male and a female connection there and effectively what you want to do is pair them up. So this male connection here requires the female one and the male uh, ferrule part there wants to go with the female of the MC4 part there. And as long as you keep them um, set out like so, you're gonna be perfectly fine because what you don't want to do is mix these up like so. And if you did that and you crimp those onto your cable and tried to put those in, in those MC4 connections, effective what you would have is an incorrectly made joint. And then when you try to put those together, um, you're gonna have problems with them connecting. Uh, yeah. So as you know, um, loose wires will cause fires, and especially in this part with DC, um, it's something you want to avoid. And as long as you make off a connection correctly, uh, there's gonna be no problems there as well. So we've got the MC4 connections there, set out as we need them to be. Um, like I say, the female side there with the male, and then that female with the male connection there. To make these connections off properly, you can use uh, any side cuts or anything like that just to trim the cable. The cable in question that we'll be working with is going to be this solar PV, um, four millimeter squared um, DC cable here. And as we have a close look at this, uh, you can see that this is made up of a two parts. Uh, so you've got an outer sheathing and an inner sheathing there. Um, so it's important that this insulation is kept um, throughout and you shouldn't really have any of the uh, whiter inner insulation on shore so the outer sheathing here the black sheathing wants to travel all the way into this stuffing gland here um, ensuring that as well you're keeping um, the IP rating of the full fitting but there's no access there um, if there were to be any damage to that uh, inner insulation that you're going to have contact with um, the conductor inside. Okay, so like I say, what I'm going to do is show you how to uh, just strip this cable um, and roughly the, the, the length that's required. Um, normally uh, speaking, the manufacturer's information uh, would guide you on this, but it's roughly um, in the region of between seven and 10 millimeters that you need to um, have a bare conductor um, available just so you can crimp onto it. So when you're crimping, you're gonna make sure that you go onto the actual winged area of the actual uh, ferrule here, and you're not actually pushing the conductor all the way into um, the body of this crimp here. Okay. Um, as long as you get it in there, you're not trapping any insulation or anything like that, it should be absolutely fine. When it comes to actually making off the connection, once you've prepared your cable, and uh, you've stripped everything back, you're gonna make sure that you use a suitable crimping tool. In this instance, we've got a solar uh, PVMC4 
uh, crimping tool. And as you can see here, you can get them from most places, uh, but it's it, as it shows that uh, MC4 uh, connections, that's what it's used for. And then you've got your different sizes there. So you've got 2.5, 4, and 6 millimeter squared cable. In this instance, we're using the 4 mil cable, which is one of the most uh, common sizes to use. So all you need to do is get yourself some cutters. You just need to make a nice clean cut. And what you want to do is take away some of the outer, outer sheath in there and you want to expose the inner insulation of this cable. So once you've exposed the um, inner insulation, you can see there that's, that's a fair amount. If you were to put that up to the actual rail part, there's way too much there, but it's better to cut slightly more than not enough because you're gonna trim it back to ensure you've got the right amount of each. We'll, we'll take some more off this. So once you've stripped back the cable, this is exactly as it needs to be. And what you want is the actual solar uh, string cable itself uh, to be stripped back so you've got the outer sheet in there and then you've got a bit of insulation there inner insulation and then you've actually got the conductor there as well so when it comes to the actual um, measuring of this like i say the wing part itself is like so um, and this winged part here which is the very end of this ferrule wants to be roughly the size of that uh, inner insulation which it is there so you want to be making sure when you push this on you don't want this conductor going all the way through into that fitting that's too much so roughly you want just enough past the uh, past the wings there and roughly it's around like i say it's around about seven to ten millimeters that you need so you're just going to pop that put your cutters on there snip those through and then once that's prepared all you're going to do is offer that up to your fitting and as you can see it doesn't go into the actual um body of the ferrule there all you're doing is coming into that winged part there so then the next part that you want to do is ensure that first of all you've got this prepared give the wings themselves a little squeeze this just makes it a bit easier when it comes to putting them in the uh, crimper but you're just keeping them nice and straight and then you want to make sure that you've got your um, fitting prepared so once you've made these connections off and you're happy with how much conductor is showing you need to be making sure that you're going to pair up the right parts with the fitting. So we've got the, the male MC4 bit and you need the female crimp to go with it. So we'll just pop these sides, uh, th these parts to one side for now. So when it comes to actually putting this in the in the crimping tool, make sure you're putting it in the correct chamber there. In this instance, we're using four, milli four millimeter squared sole PVC um, cable. So we're going to put that in the middle one there making sure it's nice and straight as it goes in and all you're going to do is make sure the actual ferrule itself is pushed into the chamber as so and you want to have it so it's paired up nicely and it's all the way to the edge um, just so when you come to you you come to crimp down you're going to get a good sound connection with this you're then going to grab your cable and you're going to ensure that your that your cable stripped down as we've discussed and then you're going to put the actual conductor part into the fitting there so as you can see we're not pushing the cable all the way through we're just putting it the conductor into the end and all you're going to do is just push onto that and you're going to squeeze and give it a crimp once you've done the full cycle you're going to pull that out and then as you can see looking on the edge of that you have got a nice connection there the, the, the crimped area is directly onto the conductor and it's not onto the inner insulation, uh, making sure it's a nice sound connection. Once you have done this, all you then need to do is ensure that your connections are all uh, sound, you're happy with it. And then all you're going to do is undo this part here, making sure you've got the right one. We've got the, female going to, uh, you've got the male going to the female there. Push that over. You've got to make sure though, when you do push this on, you're listening for the click, and once that's clicked on, that's showing um, it's an audible noise, so you, you can hear that it's a nice sound connection. So that little click there, it's on. You can also pull the rest of that off, and as long as you can see there, that the outer sheathing goes all the way down, it's going into this um, rubber seal here as well. The outer seal then goes over the top making sure it's paired up you've got no white inner insulation showing so you're going to pull that down 
and you're going to tighten it up onto that actual connection there. Once you get so far, absolutely fine. You can use the other connection there for now just to put it together. And you can also use your MC4 connection spanner like so. Pop that onto there and all you're going to do is hold the body of fit in and you're just going to give it a nice tighten up. This is going to ensure you get a nice sound uh, connection and you're keeping the IP rating um, on, on that cable as well. So there's not going to be any wall that's going to be able to get inside that fitting, cause any corrosion or any problems with that connection. Okay, so what you would do is repeat the process again for this side. And once both connections are made, they are then good um, to connect. And obviously you would do this throughout your installation on, on all the various connections. Um, you wouldn't ever try to crimp these um, with say, say, a, a plier or anything like that. You need to use a suitable crimping tool like we've just shown you, um, ensuring that it's got a nice sound connection. And as you can see, that is absolutely solid. And if you look inside there, you've got the right connection there. If you were to use that one, then that would be incorrect for that side of the MC4 connection and you wouldn't get a sound connection and you'd have problems putting them together as well. So there you have it. To ensure you get a sound connection, you need to ensure that you follow the steps like we've just discussed and you're going to use the correct fitting for the job. In this case, uh, for solar PV um, cable, string cabling, you're going to ensure you use a correct connection, in this case an MC4 connector, and making sure you follow the correct steps to ensure that the conductor um, is, is nice and sound uh, in terms of connection and there's not going to be any possibility of DC arcing or anything like that. So there we have it. So if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. Please subscribe if you want to watch any more exciting content. And any comments, um, just bother me in the box below and we'll get back to you on that. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.